Hello everybody, Mobius1 here, bringing you another Star Wars Galaxies emulator video. Uh, this is part two of city management. My last video was kind of like an introduction to city management. It was also a politician guide. This one's not really so much a politician guide because while the topics we're going to be talking about are relevant to the mayor of a city, um, it's, we're not, basically everything specific to the actual profession of politician was covered in my last video. So this one, we're just kind of going to talk about some of the finer points of managing a city that I didn't really talk about in the last video. So, um, we're going to spend most, if not all, of this video inside our very underdecorated city hall. So, we talked a little bit, uh in the last video about the uh, voting terminal. I, I don't think actually I need to say anything else about the uh, how to run for mayor and and uh, get elected and that sort of thing, except um, I failed to say in the last video, you noticed if you did watch the last video, I tried to enter the race for mayor and the game did not allow me to um, because since the, the voting cycle is a three week voting cycle, during that third week of voting, you're there. Are, uh, you are not allowed to enter the race for mayor. It kind of like locks out new entrants, um, so that everybody has to get into the race during the first two weeks, and then only voting is allowed to happen in the third week. Um, it's just something that I noticed uh, while editing the video that I failed to mention. So pretty much everything uh, that we're going to talk about is in this video is gonna kind of be from this city management terminal which is in the left room uh, of the city hall now this terminal you can actually access this terminal you don't have to be a mayor to access this terminal in any city you actually don't even need to be a citizen of a city to access this terminal though I think if you are a citizen um, you get a couple extra options, and if you're a mayor, you definitely get a couple extra options. So by clicking and holding on the, on this terminal, since I'm the mayor, I have all of the options here. Now I think just about anybody can view the city info. So the city info shows a couple different things, and I don't know exactly how many of these options are going to be available to, to you depending on your level, but we're going to go through as many of them as I can. And some of these are pretty self-explanatory. For example, if I go to status report, it's just going to give us the name of the city, it's going to tell you who the mayor is, which is me, it's going to give you the location of the city hall uh, in X, XY coordinates, the radius of the city, which is determined by the city rank, which we talked about in the last video, uh, number of citizens, number of structures, the city specialization, which we will be covering in this video, your current number of uh, skill trainers, which this uh, got messed up due to a bug. I never actually placed the rest of our trainers, so we only have five trainers right now. Uh, current number of terminals, income tax, property tax, sales tax, travel cost, and garage cost. Um, which all of these are pretty much what we're going to be talking about in this video. And as you can see, we don't actually do many of these. I do do a 100 credit travel cost, um, just because traveling to player cities is very cheap. So that's what that gives you. Then you could do a citizenship report, and this is just going to simply give you a list of every player, uh, every character that is a citizen of the city. And it might take a while. Here it is. Holy moly! That's a lot of people. So yeah, that's a list of 90 people, and you can see some of these people have the word militia in their name in parentheses. Now, I don't know if I mentioned militia in the last video. I know um, that I did not go into it in detail, um, but we will be talking about that in this one as well. Structure report. This one just gives you the condition of all of your civic structures, including the city hall. So you can go in here and see uh, if any of your structures are starting to decay. And we'll talk about what causes structure to decay shortly. City advancement. This is kind of that city cycle that I was talking about in the last video, so I'll just kind of repeat it. Um, every city in the game is on a seven-day cycle, starting from the moment the city hall is placed. And when at the end of that seven-day cycle, the election is held. Um, the new mayor, if a new mayor is, is voted in, that mayor assumes control of the city. Um, if the current mayor is, you know, retains 
mayorship, then nothing changes there. Um, the the city will look at that mayor's stats or skills. Um, it will look at the number of citizens, and it will make any changes according to according to what permissions, I guess, or what skills the mayor has. Like if the mayor has the ability to, uh, let's like, let's say you have a bank in the city and a new mayor wins the election and that mayor does not have the ability to place banks. I think, and I've never had this happen, so I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, I'm fairly sure that if that, in that case, any banks that were in the city will be destroyed. Now, uh, I, maybe they won't, and somebody, if somebody knows this, they can comment and I'll add an annotation. Maybe if there are any banks like that are already placed, that they'll be fine. The new mayor just won't be able to place any additional ones. But uh, the reason I think that they will be destroyed is because I know if um, if you lose the number of citizens required for your city rank. So let's take a look at this. Right now we're city rank uh, five, which is Metropolis. The population required for a metropolis is 85 citizens, and this is another thing that I talked about in the last video. You can see now we have 90 citizens, so we beat our minimum requirement. Now, if we, you know, for some reason dropped below this, uh, if we dropped to 80 citizens within uh, the next two days, so you saw when I pulled this up, if I do the city advancement again, I get a little system message here. Next city update, two days, 19 hours, 47 minutes, 17 seconds. That is the end of our seven day cycle. If we go to 80 or below 85 citizens at the end of that timer, we will actually drop down to rank four in our city radius, which we can see here. The 450 will actually drop back down to what is it? 400, I think. Uh, yeah, so we'll lose 50 meters to our radius, so we'll go back down to 400 meters. Any civic structures or skill trainers or mission terminals that are in that outer 50 meters when that radius shrinks will poof, just vanish. So that's, I, that's kind of why, that's the logic I guess I'm using to say that uh, if a new mayor takes over and he doesn't have the skills to place a structure, it will it will also disappear but again i'm not 100 percent certain on that um you can see our max decorations the maximum number of decorations that you can that a mayor can place in the city is the city rank times 10. so again we're city rank 5 we can place a total of 50 decorations um the maximum skill trainers is 15. this is also based on the city cap and note that at rank 5 you can only have 15 skill trainers which means you cannot have one of every profession skill trainer in your city so just as a suggestion obviously you could do whatever you want but if it were in our city well what i don't really see the purpose of is putting like starter profession trainers like marksman medic brawler entertainer um because you can find those in just about any npc city so you're probably better off putting like elite or hybrid profession trainers like bounty hunter, rifleman, combat medic, whatever. Profession trainers that you actually use are like your your citizens actually are using. And you can change these at any time. The mayor can go in and remove trainers, place trainers on, at will. Um, actually, one thing that I think we, we were doing in the past is I had 14 skill trainers placed. And th that way, I always had the ability to, if somebody wanted a specific skill trainer that wasn't there, I didn't have to worry about removing one. I could just, wherever we were in the city, place that skill trainer, let that person train a skill, and then remove it. And that was working pretty well. Uh, Rank-enabled structures, once again, depending on what rank your city is, determines what uh, structures you can place. I'm just looking at the list on the, um, the SWG scrapbook article, which again, link will be in the video description if you want to check it out. Uh, rank 1 lets you place a small garden. It's the only thing that you can place at rank 1. If you do get up to rank 2, that's when you can place a bank and place a medium garden. Uh, rank 3 gives you cloning facility and a large garden. And then rank four is what gets you the shuttle port. So rank four is kind of like the target rank for most cities, but uh, it does have a pretty steep requirement of 55 citizens. And like I said in the last video, each planet is limited to the number of cities that can reach rank four. 
So you might have to wait for an existing rank 4 city to de-rank before your city can reach that rank. Uh, it's actually, it's a, it's a whole, like, meta of, I don't, like, economic struggle, I guess. Trying to, dep it depends on what planet you're trying to start a city on, right? If you're trying to start a city on a starter world, like Corellia, Tatooine, or Naboo, you're going to have a much harder time getting a city to rank 4 because many people want to have rank 4 cities on those worlds. But right now, I'm pretty sure, like, if you start a city on Locke, or Rory, or Talus, or even maybe Dantooine, Dantooine's kind of popular, but on any of those three, and possibly Dantooine, you're going to have a much easier time reaching rank 4 than on a starter world. Uh, especially because the cap's higher. Alright, um... So yeah, so as a rank 5, you don't actually gain the ability to place any additional structures. Um, it just is pretty much the other stuff. Now, the maintenance report. This is where... This is kind of like the bulk of what we're going to be talking about in this video because managing a city is expensive very expensive depending on what you want in your city now the more stuff you like just about everything you add to your city is going to add to your city's maintenance um just like structures in galaxies cities require weekly not well, yeah all right so structures require hourly ma hourly maintenance city requires weekly maintenance but it's on a much higher scale so you can see, right now, a rank 5 city hall, just the city hall, is 135,000 credits a week. That is just the city hall. Map registration. So, uh, what skill is it for politician? Yeah, so fiscal policy 1 lets you register the city. It's something we talked about in the last video. That's what lets the city actually show up on the map, right? The fact that we want our city to show up on the planetary map adds 5,000 credits a week to our city maintenance, okay? City specialization, which we haven't talked about yet, another 125,000 credits. All right, we'll get into that in a bit. Our structures. We have a cloning facility, 20,000 credits. We have four banks. 1,500 credits each, which isn't really that much. Oh, look, no, we have more than that. We have five banks, 1,500 credits each. Our garage, parking garage, 20,000 credits. Shuttle port, 25,000 credits. Decorations, we have two street lamps, 1,500 credits each. We have a garden for 10,000. Another garden for 20,000. The brazier is 1,500. The rectangular fountain is 1,500. The circular fountain is 1,500. Then, all of our trainers, 1,500 credits. All of our mission terminals, 1,500 credits. So what does that mean? At the end of each week, our total city maintenance is 390,000 credits. Just poof! Vanishes. So, um, yeah, managing a city, not a cheap feat. Definitely something that if, if you're trying to do uh by yourself because i did mention in the last video that theoretically or realistically or one of those words if one player wants to use all 10 of his or her tunes to make a city on their on their own um you can it's something that you can do but you're going to be paying a lot um not nearly as much as this because again we're rank five the cost for your city goes up the higher the rank you are and the more stuff you have in it so at rank one you're not going to be paying nearly as much i don't think this article no this scrapbook article does not give maintenance values for the city hall but it, i know it's much much lower than than what this is but uh that brings us to our next thing which I believe if you're as long as you're a citizen of the city you have access to this uh, I don't know if you can see this as a non-citizen but you might be able to you might be able to check the Treasury report so if they go to Treasury report you can actually see how many credits are in the city Treasury so right now we have a little under 850,000 credits in our Treasury this is basically the city's maintenance pool. The cool thing about this though, which is unlike a regular house or a regular structure, is any any citizen of the city can donate to the treasury, which is really handy for like if you're in a guild and you have guild members just like 
Star Wars Galaxies University, SWGU, we have members that want to donate credits to the guild, but just to avoid any sort of, like, weird misuse of funds, like, I, like, I don't know, like, I, I feel awkward if people, like, give me, personally, their credits, They're like, oh, here, I want to donate a million credits to the guild, I'm good, here's a million credits, instead of giving it to me, which, like, I don't have a problem with that, this, running a city is expensive, so I would definitely use that for the city, but, like, you can cut the middleman out completely, and just go to the city hall, and anybody can donate uh, money, donate credits to the city treasury themselves. That way you know 100% that money is going towards the city. Now, yes, the uh, the mayor does have the ability to withdraw fr uh, funds from the city. But if they do that, not only do... I think there's a cap. Um, I don't... I don't know if... Some, this says that either. Um... No, this doesn't say anything about the cap. I, I want to say, and again, this is not something that I'm 100% sure on, but I want to say that the um, the mayor uh, can only withdraw 50,000 credits a week. That seems awfully low. Maybe there isn't a cap. But I do know that if the mayor withdraws funds from the treasury, I'm 99% sure an email goes out to the to every citizen of the city letting them know. So if you have a mayor that's being real stingy with city funds, uh, that's that's when your citizens should elect a new mayor um, because he's he's draining your city treasury. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's the city treasury is pretty self-explanatory. Really going over like what structures and stuff cost is kind of what I really wanted to talk about but there the only other thing that needs to be mentioned are taxes and city specialization and I guess we could talk a little bit about militia so um, these these options are specific to being a mayor uh, city management this option does not show up to citizens it does not show up to regular players this is an option that only the mayor can see you have changed city name if you want to change the city name I don't know if it if there's a cost for this it doesn't say there is but it does say the city must be uniquely named for the planet and note that citizens of your town will receive an email notifying them of the change so you can change the name of your city without having to start over um unregister city if you want to make it so that your city does not show up on the map then you'll save that 5,000 credits a week but it won't show up on the map Disable zoning, this will prevent anybody from placing structures if anybody's got the grant zoning um, command like on them. We talked about that in the last video. That's what, uh, if you want somebody to be able to place a structure within city limits, you have to use the grant command on them to grant them zoning rights. Um, and if you want to revoke that ability from them early, because when you use that ability, it gives them 24 hours uh, of zoning rights. But let's say if you don't want them to have it for 24 hours, you'd have to use that ability on them again in order to revoke it. Um, but if they log out or their character disappears or you don't know where they went, how can you use that ability on them again? Um, you can't. So what this is is basically just a way to go to like revoke zoning rights globally. Um, manage militia. This is all right. Let's talk about militia. So what is militia? Um, the city militia are citizens that have, basically, they have a couple of uh, special abilities that other citizens do not have. Mainly, the main one is the ability to grant zoning rights. Because by default, the mayor is the only citizen, the only, yeah, the only citizen that can give other citizens zoning rights. So, by bringing a citizen to this terminal... They have to be within 10 meters of this terminal in order to make them a militia member. But you go to manage militia, you do add militia member, okay. You would type their name in here, just like you were adding someone to the admin list of your house or whatever, or inviting somebody to the guild. Um, that makes them a militia member. Now, uh, the militia members gain the ability to grant people, grant and revoke zoning rights. They also gain, what... I know they have like they can ban people from the city they can warn people which I don't know is actually 
implemented in ba on Basilisk. Yeah, okay, so city ban. You have the slash city ban command, which prevents uh, people from using facilities within the city, so they won't be able to clone, they won't be able to repair their vehicle to garage, they won't be able to use the shuttle port. Um, slash city pardon actually unbans people. And then slash city warn makes it so that any militia members in the city can act can actively attack somebody as long as they're within city limits now like i said i don't know if that's implemented on basilisk we've never tested it it might work it might not work it will work at some point as basilisk gets closer and closer to 14.1 but um i don't know try it out yourselves see if it works slash city warn all right, um, that only lasts for five minutes, by the way. If you do slush city warn, it it gives it makes the person attackable, but only by mil other militia members for five minutes and only when they're within city limits. Um, so yeah, so militia those are the, the, what militia can do, but they're mostly used to grant zoning rights. Interesting note: um, militia members do not have the ability to place houses themselves. Uh, without also being granted zoning rights. So let's say me and Chewbacca here uh, want, are like, and Chewbacca is a militia member in our city, and Chewbacca wants to place a house. Well, even though Chewbacca is a militia member, and Chewbacca, since he's a militia member, can grant zoning rights, he still can't place a house, nor can he grant himself zoning rights. I don't know why that is like that. It's kind of awkward, but uh, it's it is important to know that. Um, so what we've done, just as kind of like a a workaround, is anybody that we've added to militia, we've also added one of their alts to militia. That way, if a militia member ever needs to place a house or move a house in the city, they can just dual you know multiple instance their alt online and grant themselves zoning rights from their alt but uh this is very important to know that militia members cannot grant themselves zoning rights all right so that's all we need to talk about militia let's go on adjust taxes so these are pretty self-explanatory um income tax is this for missions it doesn't actually I didn't think this was working, and it's not on the, um, this is not on the scrapbook. Interesting. So I think, I don't know if this was ever implemented. Maybe that's why it's not in the scrapbook, but I think what income tax is supposed to be, I, I don't think this is working, but I think it's supposed to be a tax on mission rewards. Oh, no, never mind. Okay, so income tax is a flat fee charged to each citizen of the city every week. It acts as a membership fee for citizens of the city. The income tax may be any value from 0 to 2,000 credits per week. There you go. So you can charge a flat fee of up to 2,000 credits to all citizens per week. All right. Uh, property tax, I know what this one is. This one is percentage based of their of a house. So property tax is charged to every structure placed within the city on an ongoing basis. The tax value is a percentage of the total credits paid in maintenance. So a structure that pays 10 credits an hour would pay the city one credit an hour if the property tax was 10%. The property tax may be any value from zero to 50%. So what's interesting about that is it's percentage based. So those players that have small houses are paying less credits in maintenance or in uh, property tax than somebody with like a guild hall or a large house. Um, then we have sales tax. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is whenever a purchase is made with uh, from a vendor within the city, a certain amount of that purchase goes towards the city treasury. Now this is something again, and this can be anywhere from 0 to 20%. I don't know if this is implemented on Basilisk yet. Um, but again, eventually it will be. And what else do we have? Travel ticket fee. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is a, just a base fee that's added to the purchase of any travel ticket. It can be anywhere from 1 to 500 credits. Um, a, a ticket from a either to or from a player shuttle port is 100 credits. 
So, even if you max this out, like, if you put the highest amount of, of fee on here, like 500 credits, that means the ticket is only going to be 600 credits, which is still, for most players, nothing. So, some cities do just jack this up because it's kind of an easy way to add some extra money to the to the city treasury. Um, as I showed earlier, where was it in the maintenance report? No. One of these menus. Not the citizenship. Where was it? Just the status? Yeah. We have a 100 credit fee on ours because what's an extra 100 credits? That means every time you travel either to university camp... No, it's not even to. It's only from. It's only when you purchase the ticket in the city. So if you were to travel to university campus, the ticket fee would be 100 credits. If the, if the place you were purchasing the ticket did not have a fee also. that's I guess that's important to note. So if you were like from Nim Stronghold, which is an NPC shuttle port or starport, uh, if you travel, you purchase a ticket from there to university campus, the fee is 100 credits. To purchase the ticket back from university campus to NIMS, or to anywhere, on lock for that matter, uh, the fee will be 200 credits. So 100 of that will go towards the ticket, and the other 100 will go towards City Hall. So, again, it's just some extra money into the city treasury. Um, and the last one is the garage service fee. This is a percentage fee that you can charge for people to repair their vehicles at a garage. Believe it or not, there are players that like to repair their vehicles. I'm one of them. I know it's cheaper to just use your swoop until it de is destroyed and then replace it. But uh, just out of convenience, I like to repair my vehicles because it still is not that very expensive. And it saves me the time of having to actually go and purchase swoops every time one of mine breaks. Um, so the very last thing that we have to talk about is city specialization. Now this is something that you gain, that the mayor gains through abilities. So you kind of have to look on your skill tree and determine, first of all, which one you want, um, and second of all, what skills you need to get it. So Fiscal Policy 3 gives you City Specialization Manufacturing Center, uh, Fiscal Policy 4 gives you Research Center, uh, Martial Policy 2 gives you Clone Lab, Martial Policy 3 gives you Stronghold. Uh, what else we got? Civic Policy 3 gives you Entertainment District and Medical Center. Civic Policy 4 gives you Improved Job Market and Sample Rich. And that's it. So, what are these? And I'm basically going to just read these off the scrapbook. Because I don't, I don't have all the percentages memorized. And the scrapbook actually shows you the um, cost for them. So, most cities in the game, and obviously there there are some that use the other specializations, but most of them use either Manufacturing Center, Research Center, or uh, Medical Center. Very few use Medical Center. Most of them use Improved Job Market. So, what do these do? Basically, this is like, City Specialization is kind of like a buff. And whenever you enter the city, it will tell you, it tells you a couple things. Like, you get a message that pops up on your screen that says, you have entered university campus. And then in parentheses, it will say what type of city it is, like what rank it is. So for us, it will say metropolis. And then it will say the city specialization, so which for us is research center. And it's it's like a global buff that that is applied to everything that within the city so what these are all right so sample rich this very bottom one um all of these also add a a flat rate to the city maintenance so if we go back and look at our maintenance report you can see our specialization so research center which i said this is what ours is costs us 125,000 credits a week so each of these costs you a certain amount of credits. Sample Rich costs 70,000 credits, so not as much as Research Center. And basically all it does is it adds 20% more resource resources and a 10% greater chance of finding resources within the city. So if a really high concentration of uh, really high quality resources happens to pop up within your city limits, you can switch over to a Sample Rich uh, city specialization and all of the percentages within city limits will go up 20 percent um manufacturing center costs 50 credits a week 
And all crafting done within crafting uh, manufacturing center earns a 10% bonus to prototype assembly results. So that's basically when you create your item, whether it's an amazing success, a great success, you know, whatever, um, your roll on that is 10% higher. Uh, clone lab costs 80k, 80,000 a week. Um, cost of clone insurance in a city with a clone lab is reduced by 20%. No one uses that. Improved job market, which is you'll see most of the time on Dantooine, where a lot of people do like solo missions to earn credits, um, costs eighty thousand a week, and increases the mission payout taken from mission terminals within the city by twenty percent. So that's really like if you're doing solo missions, you want to be doing them out of an improved job market city because twenty percent increase on mission payout is amazing. Um, entertainment district. 80,000 a week and entertainer healing is 10% more effective in an entertainment district. I don't know if that includes buffs. It just says healing on the um I think it does include buffs. It says entertaining healing is 10% more effective, but I think that does include buffs because medical center also costs 80,000. What where are you? 80,000 a week and it says medical healing is 10% more effective in a medical center and I know that affects doctor buffs So it probably does for entertainment as well uh, Stronghold is interesting 150,000 a week and basically militia members Get a 50 point bonus to all defense rolls against players in a stronghold so if you're using that slash city worn Ability and you're fighting players in your city pretty often then stronghold is the one that you want to choose um, And I think that is it. That's all of them, right? Yeah so uh, Research center. How come that's not listed here? Oh I skipped it research center 125,000 a week and any experimentation done within a research center is enhanced you gain a 15% bonus to the final result roll uh, wait yeah, to the final result uh, during experimenting. So, given the choice between a research center and um, manufacturing center, I think research center is a little bit more beneficial uh, because you tend to experiment multiple times when crafting an item. You only roll the assembly once. Uh, so, I would go with research center, even though it does cost two and a half times as much. So, yeah. That has got to be all of the information I can think of that you would possibly need to know about running a city. Um, yeah. So, I hope this video guide, this two-parter, has helped you. Anyone who is potentially wanting to run or start and run a city, uh, anyone who's already managing a city, if you maybe weren't clear on something, this video helped you learn whatever you were unsure of. Uh, post comment, let me know what you guys think. If you still have any questions or if there's anything that I missed, also let me know. I might have to make like a little annotation somewhere and, and clarify on something. Um, so yeah. Leave your love in the comments below, give the video a like, and stay tuned next time. Mobius1 here, thanks for watching.